Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the Reactive Chemistry module. This is video number six, and this time we're going to be looking very briefly at combustion reactions. Combustion reactions are reactions that involve the combination of a fuel source, which is quite often a hydrocarbon, and also oxygen. These reactions are also exothermic as they are generally designed to release energy and not just release energy, but usually in the form of heat. One of the important things about combustion reactions is that the actual amount of oxygen can affect the products of a combustion reaction. The simplest way to demonstrate this is to use something like methane. This is something that we've looked at in previous videos. If you add uh, a certain amount of oxygen, then one of the products that you get is uh, carbon soot, uh, black carbon, which is the graphite form of carbon, and water, uh, usually a gas at that, at that point. Um, carbon uh, is uh, often produced when there is a low supply of oxygen, um, and sometimes you can see that in things like bushfires. You can see the black uh, smoke pouring off, and that's the carbon that's being produced as a result of the combustion of the fuel source. For this particular reaction, of course, we um, have to make sure that all our reactions are balanced. And at the moment, they're not. I've got four hydrogens over here and only two here. So I'm going to put a two in front. Oops. A two in front, uh, which also means I've got two oxygens and two oxygens. So now this equation is balanced. I'll give it a little tick so I know it's all right. Now, if we increase the amount of uh, oxygen, Oops, just pop back for a second. Uh, so same fuel source, uh, methane is the gas, uh, oxygen. But this time uh, I'm going to a different product, carbon monoxide. Now carbon monoxide is produced when the amount of oxygen is a little higher than what it was uh, for our soot but not high enough to produce the third potential product of this combustion reaction, which is carbon dioxide. One of the interesting things about this is that when I go through and I seek to balance this equation, um, I notice that if I put my two uh, in front of here, because I've got the same problem with the hydrogens, then I've got two and one is three oxygens. Now, I'm going to do something that's kind of a little bit of a cheat at the moment. I'm just going to put a one and a half at the front of the oxygen. You'll see why I do that in a few moments. The third um, type of combustion reaction that I want to look at is this one, um, O2 gas. This time the product is carbon dioxide and still water. I still have the problem of CH4, so I'm still going to have a two at the front of here. But now I have um, two oxygens here and another two times one, which is two oxygens here, which means I have four in total, which means I need to have a two here. So notice that the ratio of fuel source here is one mole to one, one mole to one and a half. So what I would often do is make that, uh, let's just put a different number at the front so we know. So I've got a half here, so the easiest thing is to double everything, a two there, a three there, a two there, and a four there. And then of course the third one has a ratio of one to two. You can see that here, here, numbers out the front, numbers out the front, and of course no number at the front means it's a one. So the ratio here of uh, fuel, to oxygen is actually affecting the type of product that we get. So it's not just that we get, you can see the amount of water, and I've deliberately left it this way, so that the amount of water that's produced in the combustion of methane under each of these conditions is the same. But in terms of the um, product, it's quite different. Carbon, carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide and the only reason that we get a different product is because of or is influenced by the amount of oxygen that we have available. Simplest way to demonstrate this is with your Bunsen burner. We know that we can go from a hole that is closed so that is really restricting the amount of oxygen that is uh, being produced to one that is almost fully open 
and that is maximizing the amount of oxygen that you get. And you notice um, not only the fact that this one will end up with a black deposit on the test tube or the beaker or whatever it is you happen to be heating, you will also find that the amount of heat is much higher. So this is more efficient. This last one here is an efficient type of combustion which maximizes the energy output. And this is one of the important things about combustion reactions. There's lots of different types of fuel sources. So this here is our fuel. In this case, we chose methane. We could choose any of the other hydrocarbons, uh, any of the alcohols, such as ethanol. Uh, spirit burners also work very well. Um, candles are also hydrocarbons as well, just longer chain ones. Lots of different fuel sources. And each of these are affected by the amount of um, oxygen that's available which then affects the particular type of products that we have. But we'll have a play around with the Bunsen burners in class to give you a chance to look at each of these different types of combustion reactions, or at least the difference between complete, which is the bottom, combustion, and incomplete combustion, which is characterized by these other two uh, reactions here. Thanks for watching.